This video is long overdue, and it's all about automating your social media with AI. Welcome to Automated Income Lifestyle. I'm Chris Morton, a homeowner with a homeless man's beard. Seriously though, I got the wiriest beard in existence. You guys have probably noticed I can seriously go from zero to Martin Van Buren in this fast. So I'm gonna start by showing you really simple workflows. Two module scenarios that are meant to do things like post images regularly or tweet regularly. Then I'm going to go into more complicated things that'll allow you to post text, images, links, and things like that. And then I'm going to finish with what I call my social media magic wand. This is an automation that allows you to blast posts to as many platforms as you want at the same time. Head on over to your make.com account. I've got a link in the description. If you haven't already signed up, thank you for using my link. It helps me keep making these videos. You can also use your Wonder AI account if you signed up for Wonder AI. So you're going to create a new scenario. For those who want to start from a template, I've got some easily downloadable templates down in the description. I'm going to show you how to build it out completely, but if you're like me and you're lazy and you just want to start from a template, I hooked you up. First one that I'm going to show you is I call it a simple image blaster. It's just two modules. We have an OpenAI Dolly module that generates the image and it spits it over to your Facebook page. Can't get more simple than that. To get started, click on the starting plus sign and you'll want to find your OpenAI module. If it's not already in a list, you'll just type it in a search. And the one we want to use, I don't see it right in this list, so I'm gonna click the top. And now I see every module that's available for OpenAI and we want to use generate an image. If you have not already set up your connection to OpenAI, you'll need to go ahead and do that. If you don't have an OpenAI account yet, you'll need to sign up for one. If your OpenAI module is already connected and set up and you don't need to go sign up, go ahead and skip to 3 minutes and 45 seconds. If you don't have an account with OpenAI, you will have to head on over to the OpenAI website, not openai.com, but rather platform.openai.com. Once you have created your account and you are logged in, you'll be in the developers area. And what you'll want to do is click on the little gear right here. And this takes you to the screen that you might be familiar with. We have billing right here. You'll want to make sure to connect your payment card. They no longer charge your credit card periodically. They want you to top up. So you top up your balance. Once you've got your balance topped up, then we need to get your API key. You'll go to your profile. You'll go to user API keys. And you will create a new secret key. You'll only be able to copy paste that key once. So make sure you grab it. And once you have that key, you'll want to go back over to your make account. And when you're setting up your module, it's going to ask you for the API key. It's also going to ask you for your organization ID. So let's go back over here and you click on organization and it gives you your organization ID. You copy paste both your organization ID and your API key that establishes your connection and you're ready to rock. Once you've connected your module, then you might need to do the same thing with Facebook if you're new to this. When we go to add our next module, you click on this little nub on the edge of OpenAI. That'll open another Flyout Plus, and then you'll want to add your Facebook Pages module. Specifically, you want to add Upload a Photo. So let's find that. There it is. Nope, that's video. Upload a Photo. Select that one. If you're new to this, Facebook is an integrated authentication experience. So just like Google, Instagram, all the other things where you can kind of sign on on different platforms, you only have to sign in. You don't need your API key. Get your Facebook set up and you'll want to open up your Dolly module. You get the option to choose between Dolly 2 and Dolly 3. The primary difference is that Dolly 2 is cheaper, but it's also not as good of an image generator. It also might not accept a prompt as long as the one that I've made here. So I use Dolly 3, pretty much all that I use now. Scrolling down, you have the option to select your size. You can do square, which is the default, or you have landscape, or wait, I think that's vertical and that's landscape, one or the other. I forget which is first on the dimension list. Then we have 
standard or HD. I always use HD, but that's totally up to you. The difference again is the cost of producing the image, something like two cents versus five cents, something like that. Style, vivid or natural. And then you have the choice of returning a URL response or an image file response. This is an important little setting, and I'll show you why on my magic wand later in the video. Some modules only work with the actual image file. Other modules want a URL, and they're not consistent, unfortunately. I'm using an image file. It's going to return an image file response. Facebook will work with either one. When you open up your Facebook module, you're going to want to select the page that you want to publish to. I'm publishing to the page that I made for this purpose, which is Imagine Better Futures, but it will list all of your Facebook pages there. Make sure you're publishing to the intended page. And then you can select your album, which is any album that you've created on Facebook. I'm just going to select my timeline photos. I'm going to select file as the format. You're set up and ready to go. If you wish to add a message to your Facebook posts, you would do it here. So blah, 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 message. I'm literally gonna leave that just for fun. And let's see what's going to happen when I blast this out. Save. You can set this to post however frequently you want. You don't have to go every 15 minutes. Let's blast it. The process was a success. Let's check out the content that it created. So here's my Facebook page. Let's give it a little refresh. And there we go, posted just now along with my pretty string of characters. There we go, a nice future city posted to my Facebook. I think that can be used creatively, sometimes just blast an image with no caption, no hashtags, nothing, be mysterious however you want to do it. But most people are going to want to add some kind of text and some hashtags to their Facebook post. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But before we move on to bigger workflows, let's create an auto tweeter. I'm going to create a new scenario. And for this one, instead of an image, we are going to use text, create a completion, model. This is totally optional. The most advanced stuff is 4.0. I'm going to choose 3.5 turbo just to be cheap today. And for my messages, I'm going to do assistant message content. And this is where I'm going to instruct it to create a tweet. I'm going to say you're a social media manager whose task is to create stupid sounding tweets that make people wonder if the account owner is stoned. Don't use any more than 270 characters in your tweet and include several hashtags at the end separated by spaces, no commas, no bullets, no numbers, and do not use ampersand, use and instead. Then for tokens, because I have a free Twitter account and I'm limited to 280 characters, I'm going to put in 270. And the only reason I'm going a little bit lower, sometimes when I've asked for 280 output, I've gotten a returned result saying that it's too many characters. So apparently it can go over by a little. I haven't had any trouble with 270 though. Show advanced settings. I don't believe there's anything I need. Nope. That's just temperature, top, and number, which all stay set to 1. Then we're going to add Twitter, X, and we are going to create a post. To establish your Twitter connection, you're going to need your client ID and client secret. And that is found at developer.x.com. If you don't already have an account there, you'll need to create one. Once you have signed in to the developer platform, you click on developer portal. And that takes you to your developer screen. You'll have to create a new project, and then once you've created the project, scroll down to the bottom. That's where you find the OAuth 2 settings that you will need for Make. Copy those, copy them into here, get yourself set up, and then once you have the module going, there's really only one option, and that is we're going to map our text completion content. There we go. All right, so let's see the results, save that, and let's run the process. Boom, that was fast. So let me check out what it put over here. 
Just saw a squirrel practicing yoga in the park. Namaste, my furry friend. I mean, that is kind of stoner. It's not the dumbest thing I've ever heard, though. Now let's continue on. I'm going to go over to my socials. And I've got Facebook Advanced AI Image Blaster. This scenario is where we start to have some real fun. This time, if you're starting from scratch, you're going to select Create a Completion OpenAI Module Template. Or you can grab my template down below. It's a freebie. And right here, we are going to make sure it's chat completion. GPT-40 Mini is my favorite. It's a little bit less expensive than using 4 Turbo, but it's totally your choice what you want to use. For role, I've selected assistant. Your options are system and user. I use assistant because that's, that's the normal mode of using your chat as a virtual assistant. Message content. This is where I got a little creative. Instead of feeding my image prompt directly into Dolly like I did in the last example, I'm telling it to come up with a prompt for me. Believe it or not, AI is better at prompting itself for images than we are. So a lot of the software out there, I don't know if you've noticed, if you use image generators, sometimes you'll type in a prompt and when you send it off, it'll immediately come back with a better prompt, much, highly, much more highly detailed, and that's what it fires into your AI. This is me recreating that. Or I'm telling ChatGPT to come up with a better prompt than what I would. I'm using a smaller version of the prompt. It returns a much longer version of the prompt, and that's what we feed into the next module. I'm going to scroll down. Max tokens is set to 500. Tokens can be thought of as characters. So I'm saying, hey, give me this prompt, but don't go over 500 characters. Temperature can be thought of as creativity. If you haven't encountered this before, one means I want it to give me what my prompt specifies. Anything beyond one, and you're basically giving it the creative license to do what it wants. You probably won't get the results that you want that way. Top P, not even really sure what that is, but it's always set to one, as is number. There is no frequency penalty or anything else. Everything else is just a default setting. Oh, and you won't see any of that if you're not viewing the advanced settings. You'll need to open the advanced settings to view the entire module. So the output from that module flows into yet another chat completion. And this one here is set up basically the same way. I've limited the tokens at 32 because I'm trying to generate a title for the name of the image later on, what we're going to use when we're sending it different places. So for here, I've said come up with a good photograph title for the photograph that will be created by this prompt, and I'm going to map the output from this module. So what happens is every time we run a process, you will get an output, and we can view that, and I'll show you how to view the output here in a second, but we need to map it. To map it, if you click down in any field, you'll get this fly out window, and we've got to drill down to choices, message, and content. And you can see it written here. Last time I ran the process, it's leaving me. You won't see anything there if you've never run this before, but I see the last one, the prompt for Dali. We select content, and it places the appropriate items there so that it's going to then use that in generating a title. Next, it flows into the image generator module. The image generator module, instead of feeding the prompt in directly, like we did in my first example, it is mapping to the output of this module. And I've done that the same way. I've just made sure to select it, and then I come over here, choices, message, content, and it grabs the prompt. So let me run this real quick so you can see an example of returned output and how to view it. Save, run. And I'm going to stop it before it goes through the whole process. See how on top of the modules we have these little values right here? It has returned a response. Click right there, and we see our input and our output. Our output will tell us what has come out of this module. So if I drill down under output, choices, message, content, a lot of drilling. There we go. Now I can see the entire prompt, and this is what it's passing over to my other modules. See how much longer that is and how much, de how much more detailed that prompt is than the little chunk that I gave it? 
Then we can see right here, let's go to the output of the title, same deal, drill down to the same spot, and title, Horizon of Harmony, A Future Unveiled. Might need to negative prompt it if you guys uh, don't know or haven't seen my other videos. It likes to use the word unveiling quite a bit for some reason. We've arrived at the last OpenAI module in the series, and it's going to be another chat completion. And this one is where the social media post happens. Everything's the same, role is still assistant. And right here, we're gonna do something a little bit different. You'll see that I've defined the role again, and what I'm saying here is you are a social media manager that crafts engaging and award-winning content guaranteed to go viral. You are responsible for creating social media posts for your stunning future sustainable city landscape concept photography created by AI. Whew, that's a mouthful. Your task is to write an SEO-friendly Facebook post in the best format for that platform and base your content on this, and then it drops the prompt in there so that it can build a post off of the prompt it used to generate the photo. Your posts must be easy to read and in a professional tone. Please do not repeat instructions. Do not remember previous instructions. Do not apologize. Do not refer to yourself at any time. Do not make any assumptions. Do not specify the name of the photography company. Over time, that little negative prompt list came about because I would hit results that I didn't want. And essentially, that's the best way to handle it. You just tell the AI not to do what you do not want to happen. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You'll have to continually refine if you're getting output that you don't like. And my last little negative prompting snippet, use the word and instead of the ampersand sign separate the hashtags with spaces, no commas, no bullets, no numbers. This keeps it clean and it keeps it nice. Ampersands have a nasty tendency of causing your process to fail. So the next phase of this, what if you wanna drop in a different social media platform? We are now finished with the OpenAI modules and we're gonna add a Facebook module. This time, you're gonna to wanna to add create a post with photos. And once you've got your module selected you will set everything up basically the same and the main difference is we are now going to add a caption and a message which is going to be retrieving our output from two of our modules before so for the caption i'm going to use the title that i generated with this module right here i map to that and then for the message i am choosing the social media post which is the output from right here once you've got those set up and selected you are ready to go. There's really not any more advanced settings for the Facebook. And then this is totally optional. I have set up a Google Photos to take the photo as the last step in the series. You don't have to do this. Facebook is storing your image and you can retrieve it there. But if you do want to load your photo to Google Photos or something like that, here's how you're gonna do it. If you're searching for Google Photos, the module you're going to select is the Upload a Media Item module. It's really simple. You'll connect your Google Photos, a simple sign-in, and then you select the file and you choose the album that is on your Google, in your Google Photos. Let's take this scenario for a spin and see what our output looks like. The process has completed. Let's boogie on over to my Facebook page and give her a refresh. And let's see what the content looks like now. There we go. Just now, a completely new post. And look at that, formatted very well, several paragraphs. I've got my hashtags formatted just like I like them. We've got our complete post, beautiful, ready to go. Now let's pop on over to Google Photos. Let me refresh there. And there we go. There's my photo in my Google Photo library. All right, so now let's say we want to post to a different social media platform. I've saved all of these modules up top. They're disconnected from the main scenario process, but they are pre-configured and ready to drop in to the social media slot. So I'm going to unlink Facebook, put it up here for later, and then we're gonna drop in LinkedIn and connect them. Open up my LinkedIn module, 
and it's pretty much ready to, ready to go. If you're going from scratch, what you're going to want to do is create an organization image post. Currently, there's no way to load a post directly to your main profile, so it's kind of like Facebook in that respect. You have to have a business created on LinkedIn, and then you can load to that. Select your file where it has title. I dropped in the mapping for the title module, and then I dropped in the mapping for the social media post module. Ooh, and while I'm thinking of that, I've already changed this, but you need to be mindful. Come in here and you might want to change where it says SEO friendly Facebook post to LinkedIn post. I'm not exactly sure in this case, but when you tell AI to do this, it's drawing from a body of knowledge that might be bigger than yours, and it might be able to format these posts in a way that is more appropriate for that platform. Just a thought. Now to run the scenario and see what our output looks like on LinkedIn. It has finished. Let's pop over to LinkedIn. I've got Cascadia 3D up. Let's give it a refresh. Woohoo, there's the one I generated earlier and there's the one from right then. So there's the full post, beautifully formatted and ready for my LinkedIn audience. Ta-da, this crazy little contraption. I'll be introducing you to two new modules unless you've already dug in to make and discovered these modules for yourself. The first one is called the router. The router is just a traffic director that allows me to create more complex visual workflows. And then we have the most important ingredient to the magic wand, which is the text parser. What the text parser is actually doing, when I first started building these, the only way I could think of in my brain to do it was to have a separate create a completion module for OpenAI for every different post in order to have them all formatted for their respective platforms. But I found a better way to do it. Instead of using multiple OpenAI calls, I only call OpenAI once. How I've accomplished that is under task. Your job is to write an SEO friendly Facebook post, an Instagram post, a Tumblr post, a short tweet, a Pinterest post, and a LinkedIn post in the best format and keep the tweet 230 characters or less. Always separate them and format the separation as follows. And then as you scroll down, I've got Facebook post colon, Instagram post colon, onward down the list. And it's going to return them in that same order, which is important here in a minute. The rest of the module, pretty much identical. So let's go into the text parser and see what it's actually doing. How does it know to direct traffic? When you open the text parser, almost everything that I've configured is just default. You'll want to have global match, ignore errors, no. Pretty much everything's on the right hand side except the first for global match. And then down at the bottom, you need to map it to this right here. It needs to be looking for the module that is returning our posts. And up at the top is where the magic happens. This right here is what grabs the post itself and you'll see it says Facebook and Instagram. Why is that? In order to get it to return only the text section in between Facebook post and then what comes after it, Instagram post, it needs to be set up as such. Now, I didn't know that. In fact, I didn't know any of these fancy code symbols right here or what it's doing in this box. So how in the world did I get this to work? I used the AI assistant, and sorry if my head's kind of blocking it, the software I use, I have no way to, to move my head, unfortunately, but use their AI assistant, and what I did is I asked for what I wanted to accomplish, it gave me the text parser, and then when it wasn't working at first, I told it what was happening, then it gave me the correct syntax for the pattern in the parser field, it asked me if I wanted it to apply that to the scenario, and when I said yes, it filled it in for me. So to show you what that looks like, check it out. I'm going to type in the question that I did yesterday, so I wasn't recording at the time. My text parser is not working. It is spitting out the same text for all modules and I want it to separate the, the posts based on my 
text completion prompt in module 15. Let's see what it has to say. I have mapped the output modules. Here, let me move that. I have mapped the output module to open AI GPT-3 com create completion to complete the text parsers regen X parser, basically just telling me it did something. And please run the mapped module, see if the issue is resolved. It, you can see it kind of changed up my, my module flow a bit, but doesn't really matter. When I asked it to do this last time, it essentially fixed everything for me. So that's how I did it. I imagine there are a lot of different scenarios in Make when you're going to hit a brick wall and that's going to be the way to get you past it. Now it's time to cover the configuration of each module and we're going to go to Facebook and you'll see it's mostly the same. The only difference is that in the message field, instead of choosing the response directly from OpenAI, we're choosing the fallback match of the text parser. And because each of these are in their own chain, when you do this, you don't have to worry about seeing all of the text parsers and having to figure out which one is which. You just select the one and it's only going to show you the one immediately before this module. And Tumblr is the same. Tumblr, like the rest of them so far, you just sign in, no API needed, choose your blog, choose what type, and I'm doing photo. Then for the caption, that's where I'm putting my fallback match, you'll need to select upload photo. So I believe the default is external URL. You need to select data. You'll select your file. And then you have to decide, do you want it to go out in a already published state or do you want it to be a draft that you come back and curate later? Then we've got Pinterest. Same goes, just a sign in, no API. You'll need to select source type image base 64, which is its way of choosing data over a URL. And the content type is JPEG. You will select your OpenAI file. Is standard, I've left that empty, which just means it passes nothing, not a yes or a no. Then down at title, you're going to need to give it a title with .jpg. If you forget to do this, it's actually going to fail out. So heads up. I've put the fallback match here in the description. And I believe that is everything for the Pinterest module. Yep, that is everything for Pinterest. Then under X. So heads up, guys, I've only got the free account with Twitter, so I can't post images. I am only uploading the text as the fallback match, so just doing a, a plain Jane tweet. Then I've got Dropbox. I wanted to show you guys Dropbox. There's really not much difference between using this and Google Photos. Some people prefer one or the other. And same thing goes, you just sign in, you'll select your folder, and then you're going to select your file. And the only real option you have is whether you want to override it or not. That's purely a matter of how you're using this workflow. If you need disposable photos and not permanent storage, then overriding makes sense. Then we've got LinkedIn. And LinkedIn, just like the rest of them, we need to navigate where we're going to put our message and choose the fallback match instead. Before we run this scenario, I'm going to leave you guys with a problem to solve. So there is one module in this scenario right now that will not work. What is happening, remember towards the beginning of the video, when we first set up the image generator, I told you that we had the choice between an image file or a URL. Well, most of these, they're happy with a file or a URL. Instagram is kind of the odd man out and it will only accept a URL. It won't work with a file at all. So if I run this, it's going to break at Instagram and the rest of it is not going to run. How would you solve this? I already kind of know what I'm going to do to solve this problem, but I want to see if you come up with the same creative solution. And before you state the most obvious solution, but Chris, can't I just have Facebook post to my Instagram for me? Yes, of course you can, but that won't give you different posts. That will give you an identical post for both platforms. And I want you to try to find a solution with make modules. What I'm going to do now, for the purposes of just letting this flow without issues, I'm going to disconnect the Instagram part of this workflow. 
Everything else will be able to execute just fine. There is one module that I have not introduced you to yet, and I just wanted to throw it in as an extra, which is Dropbox. Dropbox is the same thing as most of the configurations. For Dropbox, you sign in. You don't have to enter in an API. You choose the folder that you want to publish to in your Dropbox account. You select File, and then you have the option, do you want to overwrite the previous file or no? Click OK. Now let's run this sucker and see how it goes. And it looks like it has finished, so let's check out what the output was. Let's go over to my Facebook profile, refresh. Just now, we got another fresh photo. And let's check out my Pinterest. There it is. Tumblr. Like clockwork. And let's check out my tweet. There we go. Perfecto. That concludes this tutorial. Thank you for sticking around with me to the end of the video. I hope it's helped you. I hope you find my social media magic wand useful. Don't forget, you can download templates down in the description. If you're going to participate in the challenge and try to fix the broken Instagram module, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you've done. In about a week, I'm going to upload a video showing how I solved the problem. And the next video in this series is going to be about how to connect my magic wand to my print-on-demand automation scenarios. Cheers, everybody. Onward and upward.